Behind me is a 2001 Ford Super Duty F250 long bed extended cab with a 7.3 liter diesel engine. Now don't worry, I'm gonna be featuring this truck in tons of future videos coming up, so please stay tuned. But I wanna show you something today and I wanna to talk about payload. So follow me into the truck and let me show you something really fast. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna show you the door sticker of this truck. Now, is there something you notice about this that's missing? What's missing is the payload. They don't list the payload capacity on this truck. Hey everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Media. So as a follow-up to my video on towing for dummies and understanding towing safety, which has become very popular on YouTube, I wanted to make a follow-up and talk more about payload. There's so much chatter lately on the internet about payload capacity. So many people have realized that they are at or over the payload capacity of their trucks once they hitch up their trailer and put their family in the side of their cab. But why has this suddenly become such a huge deal? Is there more going on here? And also, why does this 2001 F-250 not even list a payload capacity? This really warrants a deeper dive so we can understand this potential safety issue. Some people have suggested that payload is not a big deal and it's okay to go over payload. There's also been some articles out there recently talking about how trucks like this, this F-250, have towed you know, fifth wheels billions of miles across the United States over the past 30 years and no one really paid that much attention to the payload capacity and the people kind of knew when their truck was overloaded or it wasn't. So what's changed recently and why has this suddenly become such a big deal and are the payload capacities of modern trucks, whether it's a light duty truck, a mid-sized truck, or even a heavy duty truck, are these accurate? And what's going on here with the ratings? So let's head into the studio and take a deeper dive into this and try to understand this issue. I've always wanted to say that. Let's head back to the studio. All right, so I think there's a number of things that are happening sort of all at once to make this payload issue come to the forefront. Uh, the first is that I think more people are RVing. Uh, the coronavirus obviously has pushed more people outdoors, which is a great thing, but a lot of people are buying travel trailers and RVs and trying to tow them with the vehicles that they have. So that's one thing. Uh, the number two thing is I think trucks are getting more luxurious, they're adding more features, and those features are adding weight, which is taking some of the payload capacity out of the vehicle. So that's another thing that's been happening, you know, really over the past 20 years. Another thing that's happening is that there's a lot of government regulations these days. So automakers have to worry about um, regulations as they relate to fuel economy, as they relate to the, whatever they're going to put the GVWR or the gross vehicle weight rating of the vehicle. So there might be some cases where they want the GVWR to come in under a certain level to meet certain regulations and that can impact the payload capacity. Another thing that's happening is trailers are in general, RVs in general over time, if you really look at it, are getting larger and they're getting heavier, whether you're looking at motorhomes or towable uh, travel trailers and fifth wheels. So manufacturers in general are obviously going to want to be conservative when they're rating the weight capacity of their truck or their car. They want to make sure that they're reducing the number of accidents and failures related to people overloading their vehicle. So let's say you're a company like Ford. And if you give your uh, truck a payload capacity of 1,500 pounds, you probably know that people are going to load 2,000 pounds in it. But the engineers kind of know that and they've kind of built that headroom in there, even though the stated capacity is, low, is lower to make like the lawyers and things like that happy. But if you rate your truck at really a high level of what it can actually do, if that's what the manufacturer does, then they're putting themselves at a lot more risk. So Obviously, any sort of engineering, the published numbers are going to be on the conservative side. That's to protect everybody involved. But how far can you take this? Some people in my previous video have suggested that payload doesn't really matter that much because no one is going to pull you over and start weighing your truck and trailer to see if you're over the payload capacity of your truck. And while that may be true, then what does it matter? Um, what comes into play here? So let's talk about that. So getting back to my 2001 F-250 and why it doesn't have a payload sticker. So I think there's a few things going on there. 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, pick a time, I think that people who bought full-size trucks, especially things like heavy-duty trucks, they generally knew a little bit more about the equipment they were buying. Uh, trucks have not become quite the lifestyle choice, uh, the choice of the average American family, as they are today. So people kind of knew more about weights and hauling and how to load things and things of that nature. Trucks were more basic back then. 
Uh, they didn't have all the luxury features and they were more work vehicles and people generally knew if they were overloading their truck just by looking at the squat of the truck in the back seeing if their tires were bulging out and they could feel the difference in weight depending on how it steers and how it handles and people were more attuned to that back then at least that's how i feel now i could be totally wrong and i think all those are reasons why my 2001 doesn't really list the payload capacity they do give you a gross vehicle weight rating but if you don't know how heavy the truck is, which actually doesn't really list anywhere, then how do you know what your payload is? But back then people kind of knew that, okay, with a three quarter ton or one ton truck, you can tow an average fifth wheel trailer, which probably has a pin weight of, you know, at least 2,000 pounds. So we know that they were safely hauling for millions or billions of miles, at least 2,000 pounds, if not more like 3,000 pounds of payload. Okay, but let's take a typical half ton truck and typical travel trailer for our example. So let's imagine a Ram 1500 that may have a 1400 pound payload. Now I'm getting that payload from actual trucks that I've looked at at the dealership lots. Now imagine that you're trying to pull a 28 foot trailer that has a gross vehicle weight rating or GVWR of 7,000 pounds. Now I'm just making up this trailer, but those specs are gonna be very similar to a lot of trailers that you might actually buy. And let's say that the hitch weight of that trailer, the actual hitch weight, if you were to weigh it, not the stated weight in the brochure, because that's always very low, because they don't include the batteries, they don't include full liquids, they don't include all the stuff that you add to your truck and your trailer. So let's just establish that now. The stated hitch weights are always very, very low. But let's say it has an actual hitch weight of 900 pounds. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So you've got a 1400 pound payload. You have to first subtract the 900 pounds of the hitch weight that you have. And I'm assuming that includes the weight of the hitch, okay? That only leaves you 500 pounds for camping gear, generator, stuff in the bed, not to mention loading your family up in the cab of the truck as well. So let's say you have 300 pounds in the bed. You've got camping chairs, you've got a generator, you've got uh, coolers, you've got all the stuff that you might wanna take with you for a weekend with your travel trailer. And let's say your family of four, uh, you and your wife and two kids, weighs around 600 pounds. And I think that's reasonable um, if you consider sort of the average American family. I'm not making any negative statements or anything. I just think that's around average. If you think of, you know, maybe uh, the husband that's around 200 pounds, the wife might be around 150, and then two kids, that easily gets you up to 600 pounds. Okay, so you've got uh, 600 pounds of people and 300 pounds of cargo. So you've got 900 pounds. So the total weight that you're trying to haul with a truck is the hitch weight, 900 pounds, plus the 900 pounds for gear and for your family. So you're trying to haul 1,800 pounds, but your truck only has a 1,400 pound payload capacity. So the question is, who cares? Are you at risk? And what are we actually talking about here? We have to delve into the specifics to understand what we're actually talking about and why going over payload may or may not be such a bad thing. Okay, so we've established that in our situation, we're over payload by 400 pounds. Now, there's really five areas that I've identified that we need to look at here in this equation. Uh, so the first one is your braking system. The second one is going to be what are your axles rated to carry. The third is going to be what are your tires rated to carry. And the fourth is going to be how much is your suspension squatting down, which is going to affect your braking and your handling abilities of your truck or SUV. And then the fifth thing is looking at what is your GVWR, your gross vehicle weight rating? That's the rating that the manufacturer has chosen to rate the vehicle at to say this is the safest amount you can carry. So is it possible that the manufacturer has given the vehicle a GVWR and therefore a payload well under what all those other components can handle? Well, the answer to that is absolutely yes, that is possible, but it's a little bit confusing to understand just how much headroom you have there. So let's talk about each one of these components a little bit. So going back to braking. Is your braking system going to be able to handle the weight that you are hauling with your truck? And again, that's not really a question that I can answer for you. It's something you're going to have to uh, figure out on your own by driving your rig, driving your setup, making sure that your trailer brakes are working great, making sure your braking controller is programmed correctly and tuned in correctly with the right amount of braking going to the trailer axles um, and checking things like that. Um, different trucks have different brake setups. So a mid-size truck is going to have smaller brakes than a full-size truck, and a full-size truck is going to have smaller brakes than a heavy-duty truck. So you're going to have to look at that for your situation. But having enough braking power is obviously a huge safety issue. 
Okay, let's talk about number two, the axle rating. So you'll be able to actually find the uh, axle ratings of your vehicle on the door sticker, and if not there, somewhere in your owner's manual. You wanna make sure that you are not loading, overloading either of your axles. Now, the only way to really know this for sure is to go to a scale and have your truck weighed on both axles. Most people are not gonna do that, but you can kind of sit down and estimate this on your own a little bit if you do a little quick math with the weight of your vehicle, the weight distribution, and uh, what you're hauling in it. But spoiler alert, most of the time you're probably not going over those axle ratings. As long as you're staying under your payload, you're probably not getting close to those axle ratings. You're probably well under them. Okay, the third thing to talk about is the tire rating. Uh, making sure that whatever vehicle you're using has tires that have the correct load rating for the amount of weight that you want to carry. So load ranges, you could have a load range D, you could have a load range E, and then you get into heavier load ranges and commercial tires and things like that. But the point is to understand, you can look this up on the tire manufacturer's website and they'll say on the sidewall the tire as well, uh, what that load rating is and how much weight it's rated to carry at a certain PSI. Now you do have to remember that the PSI is gonna determine the weight rating. So the weight rating that they give you, let's say a tire says, I don't know, 2,000 pounds of weight uh, carrying ability. That's gonna be listed at the max PSI of that tire. So it might say max 2,000 pounds at 65 PSI. That means if you choose to run 50 PSI, your weight rating is not gonna be 2,000 pounds at the lower pressure, but only at that max pressure. So understand that and take that into account. But overall, make sure that your tires are rated for the amount of weight you're carrying. So if you add up uh, the weight rating of both your rear tires and your front tires and make sure that that is underneath uh, uh, the, your, how much weight you have loaded into your vehicle and the overall weight of your, of your rig, uh, you need to make sure that you take that into account. The fourth thing I brought up was suspension squat. So you all, you guys know this, when you hitch up a trailer or something, or, or if you load a bunch of bricks or something in the, on the bed of your truck, the rear of your truck goes down like that. Well, if you have too much squat, it starts to affect the way the steering feels and the way the handling feels. So uh, not just driving around corners, but any, any sort of emergency maneuver is gonna be greatly impacted by you know, not having as good a steering response and having all that weight just you know, pushing down on the rear of your truck. So you've all seen this, you've seen overloaded trucks out there, it's really not a good looking situation and you really fear for those people where the, the rear of the truck, or SUV, I see it a lot with SUVs and crossovers where they've totally bottomed out the rear suspension. Uh, now you have no suspension travel, you, your, your steering is all screwed up, it's a very unsafe situation, so don't do that. So here's the big question, and I'm sorry, and I hope I haven't forgotten any factors. If I have, let me know down in the comments. But if you are well under the requirements for all of those four areas, and you're well within those limits and it seems to be safe, but you're still over the payload and the GVWR of your truck or SUV, then is there still a problem? Well, unfortunately, this question is really not easy to answer, and it's certainly not something that I can answer clearly for you. The conservative viewpoint would be to say, look, this is what the manufacturer has tested the vehicle at. They've had to certify it to SAE J2807, uh, which I talk about in other videos. They've had to do all these tests to make sure the vehicle is safe at this amount of weight. Um, so you are taking a risk with yourself and your family if you go over that. Now, how much risk? it's really impossible to say and you're going to have to use your best judgment. Now I'm not recommending that you overload things, I'm certainly not doing that. But what I'm saying is that you have to understand your particular situation to see if it's actually going to be unsafe. It's very possible that the manufacturers are using that gross vehicle weight rating to come in under a certain regulatory requirement or just for safety and they're being conservative as a manufacturer, which obviously makes sense. But what we do know is that people have been using trucks, especially heavy duty trucks, if you look at those. Uh, for instance, my 2001 F250 with a 7.3, I see people pulling huge fifth wheels with those all day, and it's probably over that GVWR of the truck, but they've been doing it for, for you know millions and billions of miles all up and down the United States and across the US, and they haven't had many issues. So again, uh, there's more to the story. Ultimately, you're gonna have to examine all the components of your own setup to decide whether it's safe. I don't recommend exceeding your payload, I don't recommend exceeding your GVWR, but I hope today's video was useful in talking about maybe some of the factors why suddenly it's such a big issue and why so many people seem to be going over their, their limitations. One thing is definitely clear from all this. The tow ratings that the manufacturers are advertising for their vehicles are extremely misleading for several reasons. One is that they'll give you a tow rating for a vehicle that no one actually buys. So they'll say the F-150 can tow 14,000 pounds. 
Well, sorry, but any F-150 that you go look at on the lot is not going to have that tow rating. It's an extremely specific pack package, extremely specific truck that no one really buys. Could you theoretically order it and get it? Yes, but it's probably going to be like a single cab, two-wheel drive, long bed, something that actually no one has. Uh, it's going to have, you know, no floor mats, no air conditioning, you know, you get the point. Uh, so it's not actually a realistic truck. So that's a terrible game to play, but all the manufacturers are in this stupid war with each other that's hurting everybody about trying to get the most tow rating. And frankly, I would never tow 14,000 pounds with a half ton truck, just forget it. The other reason the tow ratings are really misleading is that you're gonna exceed your hauling limit or your payload limit way before you get to that tow rating. As I've showed in this video and also in my video about towing safety, there's really no way that realistically with something especially like a travel trailer that you're going to be able to achieve that maximum tow rating without going well over your payload and hauling ability. I mean maybe if you had if you really had like a 10% tongue weight which nobody has all the trailers are over 10% tongue weight nowadays and you had like only one person and you weighed like 120 pounds and you had no cargo in the bed. Well, then maybe you might be able to reach that maximum tow capacity. But since no one is actually doing that, it makes it actually impossible in the real world to max out that tow rating, to pull a trailer at that tow rating, but not be over your hauling limit. So shame on the manufacturers for putting us in this situation. It's misleading and it's wrong, and I hope they take steps to address it in the future. Also, RV dealers especially need to take more responsibility for this and help you understand what you can safely tow and haul with your SUV, crossover, light duty truck, heavy duty truck, whatever it might be. With all the new people getting into RVs, I, I'm, I'm happy that a lot of people are responding to videos like this, like myself and other channels are putting out. And if you haven't, you should look at channels like the Fast Lane Truck, uh, Keep Your Daydream, uh, some of the other great RV channels out there that talk about trucks and RVs and fifth wheels. They've done a lot of great content on this as well and probably kept a lot of people safe by educating people on this. Because honestly, you can't really trust the car dealer and you definitely really can't trust the RV dealer. And I, I don't say that to be disrespectful, but just from my own experience and from the experience that all of you have shared about your experiences with these, with these salesmen. So do your own homework, understand your own numbers, and don't trust the salespeople to keep you safe. Also, RV dealers need to really stop this half-ton towable nonsense where they list all these huge trailers and fifth wheels as half-ton towable. Uh, they're playing the same game that the manufacturers are. They're saying, well, this trailer has a DVWR of 12,000 pounds, so it's half-ton towable. But again, how many half-ton trucks are actually going to be able to do that when you realistically look at your actual hitch weight, the cargo, and the people you're putting in the truck? You actually can't tow it. But the RV dealer is saying you can, and the truck manufacturer is saying you can. So we have a problem. We have a problem. And the solution is people like you and I getting this education and doing it safely. I sincerely hope this video was useful for all of you out there. If you want to support my channel and future creation of more content like this, there's a few ways you can do it. You can hit the subscribe and hit the bell notification. Now, you have to hit the bell because the way YouTube works now, they don't, uh, they don't put the videos in your feed even if you're subscribed. YouTube is becoming all about clickbait and, and you know sensational thumbnails and you can see that because it's starting to look very trashy out there. That's because of the algorithm. So again, to beat the algorithm, hit the bell button. The other thing you can do is hit the thumbs up button. That helps the algorithm. Leave a comment or question down below. That's another way you can support the channel. And you can also support me on Patreon and there's a link below to do that if you'd like to. I'm working my hardest to improve the quality of my videos, the content of my videos, and I hope that's reflected here. So we'll see you next time. Drive safe, tow safely, ride safe, whatever sport you're into, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.